vibe gene editing. Yeah. It's an AI co-pilot. Yes, for for, for, for CRISPR. For, for, for gene like editing. CRISPR researchers. <laughs> so you know now you can vibe code with CRISPR research. <laughs> which okay, it sounds funny, but it's actually gonna be like really, really good for the scientific community. Yes. And it's been about 13 years since the discovery of CRISPR Cas9. And it's been used in a variety of different applications. But at the end of the day, the whole technology requires intricate decisions. By now, we have Cas9, we also have Cas13, we have all of these different associated proteins that you can use in these different use cases, and it's hard for a novice to know which one to use. There's a high failure rate, you can get bottlenecked in all sorts of little tiny things that happen in the scientific process, and to actually make that better for researchers, Stanford, along with Princeton, and Google DeepMind, they actually developed this co-pilot, mm -hmm. which is CRISPR GPT. That's what they're calling it. It's a co-pilot for gene editing experiments where researchers can literally talk to the CRISPR GPT and be like, you know, I want to use CRISPR on this human lung cancer cell line, and I want to target these locations. How should I do my experiment? And the GPT will output all of the steps that you should do, how you should design your experiments, what to look out for, how you should analyze the data, all of that, right? It becomes like this sort of lab mate. Yes. That, you know, you wish you had. I wish I had. Yeah, I was going to say. Back in my PhD <laughs> days, right? Um, and it, it can really expedite and democratize the use of CRISPR. Yes. In all of these systems by researchers who might not be totally versed in how to do it in the first place, mm -hmm. right? And I think that's really cool. Yes. Obviously, we will be remiss and get escoriated in the comments if we don't talk about the obvious like third rail related to all this stuff, which is you're combining these two extremely powerful but also extremely dangerous frontier technologies, and they have this accelerant effect when they're now combined yeah, and that's also true. open sourced. How does Stanford decide to release it or not release That's it? That's right. I mean, they did. So to be fair, they did have like guardrails in totally place. Um, one of the guardrails was like, you know, if you're if you're trying to like do CRISPR on like COVID or HIV, it'll just be like, no, nah, yeah, yeah. what are you doing? Yeah. Why, why are you doing that? If, if you give it um, an identifiable DNA sequence, so like something that's more than like 30 base pairs long, which is something that you can maybe identify with individuals mm. if you want patient confidentiality. Again, it'll lock down. I mean, obviously there's ways to get around this, right? And it is concerning. I just want to make sure we at least yeah. touch yeah, on I, that. And I agree with you.